here. This is Killer Kyle. And welcome to the Color tile in a different location. Well, anyways, so change of plans. I thought we would do the Ring of Honor final battle prediction show, and yeah, I got basically I think the whole card. So it should be a really good show. Yeah, it's looking like it's gonna be a good show. Who's in it, who's involved, and how it all came about, and yeah. Things are interesting. Yeah, so I mean, I have not really watched a final battle. I mean, I'm pretty sure. Actually, no, I don't think I've ever watched a final battle. So, it should be fun. I mean, I've seen Ring of Honor a lot recently, so, yeah. <laughs> So we have Bruce versus Brody King, which, I mean, I've seen Shane Taylor versus Brody Lee recently, and that was a hell of a match. It's probably one of the best wrestling matches of the year, so, and Rouge definitely is one of the best Mexican wrestlers, and watching his matches last year... And most of this year, I think that this is going to be a really good match. A hell of a, a fight between two different styles. Yeah, you've got the Lucha style and the, and the straight up brawler style of Brody Kim. And I believe this match is going to be for the Ring of Honor Championship. And it's like, okay, that was a good, good match, you know, contrasting styles going against each other. But at the same time, it's like, Rudy King tells you to the whole championship. Interesting thought, because somehow he ended up the number one contender, basically. He didn't really have a match for it. Ended up being chosen, you could say, to challenge Bruce for the championship. It's like, that aside, what you agree with him, what you disagree with him, whatever the case is, still going to be a good match. Yeah. However, I don't really know. If there's really anything about Brody that stands out as champion material, if you will. Yeah. Like, he's a big dude. He's really good at the ring. I guess he's well-spoken for himself and a good talker. But, like, not having seen a lot from him. That kind of makes it difficult to say, oh yeah, Brody can be world champion. And that's not that he can. It's just, there's not really that standard quality or standard quality that would definitively put it in his favor to become world champion. Now, 
things start at the you know, work better than Ruth could easily have been that he ends up beating Ruth. But uh, I believe Ruth faced safety when yes. beat him. So I mean, very bad. But, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to call. I mean, look, I don't think that Brody deserves, I'm not going to say deserves, I don't think that he needs the title just yet. No. I'm not sure how long he's been in Ring of Honor. Roosh is basically the veteran right now. Because he's not only been in Ring of Honor, but like Mexico as well. So, in my opinion, as much as I think Brody King is a standout wrestler. I'm going with Roosh. Yeah, it's like I said, Brody King has had some good matches. He had that match with Faith Taylor last week. And I'm sure he's had some other one on one matches. He's mainly been like Excess man and maybe regular two on two tag matches. So him not really being mainly a singles competitor that could sway things more in Rich's favor now, seemingly with Brody being on his own, I'm sure we'll see a lot more of him from him. Yeah. And as far as second match goes, but maybe at some point down the line into the new year, he could end up earning an opportunity at the world title again, and maybe the television championship. Who knows? But yeah, for right now, I'll say Ruth keeps the title. Ah. Uh. So we have a tag team match. The tag team championships on the line. Josh Grisham and Jay Lethal versus PCO and Mark Briscoe. Mark Briscoe and another tag team partner. That's Del that kind of resonating with me. Yeah, I know you see Mark and Jay for all these years. And, you know, a lot of time, Ringer Barn World Champion, and it always has been wherever one goes, the others with them, whether the get together as partners, whether the Jay having a single spot and Mark in his corner, or Mark having a single spot and Jay in his corner, they seemed inseparable. But now it's like with a match that we will get to in a little bit, Mark has decided to go on his own and still pursue tag team wrestling. Oh, yeah. And have PTO as his partner. And, and it's interesting because PCO was a member of
of lethal and aggressive, and you have the unorthodox crazy chicken kung fu style of fast aggressive and redneck food. Yeah, redneck kung fu. Who knows what you call each ghost out there? Go for it and hope for the best. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be a good match. With Mark and PCL literally being a team for like a week or a few days for the final battle on Friday, but like, I'm sure it'll be a good match. They'll make a great team, match a good match, a great team. But I don't know. To be tag team champions right out of the shoot? Yeah. I don't know. I like if it happens that'd be cool, but I can't, I can't see that. Competitors whether it be tag team or single get a championship right from jump street, if you will. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't see PCO and Mark go over. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So, and plus, I mean, Grisham is already the pure champion. And we'll get to that in a minute. But I still think that Lethal and Grisham are going to win and retain. Even though you know how I feel about a wrestler having two belts. Yes. So... Alright, so we got Bateman and Kingdom versus the OG Kingdom of Matt Taven and the recently returned Mike Bennett. So... Yeah, well, they're going to be the OG Maria. Maria and then there was Vincent in there and the other guy. Yeah. And then the kingdom simply went their separate ways and, you know, Vincent turned on Kevin. Hmm. He became his own group, his righteous and Conversation that Beth and Kate are having, and my being like, Yeah, I don't know who this Benson guy I know him as Vicky Marcellia, and you know, when he was with us, and 
she even got injured and Benny came in and that other felt his body as well as the left of man and so on and so forth. And then Benny mentioned she is the dark side, if you will, or whatever, and very much even in the this fat few building up. And it's been a real, real interesting story and build up to the mass. And with the whole thing that happened last week, might seem to get a knee injury or leg injury or whatever. It'll be interesting to see what happens going into the match and fight a battle. Yeah. Mm. I would say that it could easily get the win of this one. And then, you know, kind of revenge everything that happened as far as Aiden is concerned. True. And, you know, go off from there. And what they would do Afterwards, maybe work their way up the ladder and eventually challenge for the tag team title. We'll see, but I yeah, I could very easily see Kaden and Bennett win. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that would be interesting. We'll see what happens, but yeah, I'm gonna go with the OG key. As well, so there, yeah, yeah. All right, so at the pure championship, we've got Josh Grisham will take on Flip Gordon, and yeah, the pure tournament was amazing. Like it was professional wrestling at its best. And it was cool because there was no audience. I mean, talk about audience versus no audience. This was pretty good. Now, Flip Gordon, definitely, I haven't seen anything from him lately. But from the things that I have seen personally in Ring of Honor or Japan, I really enjoyed. Yeah, for sure. And that's the one thing that's going to be interesting about having started the wrestling with the pure title and one half the tank title. Now, hopefully, they will have the matches separate from the title, have a pure title match, and then leave some time and then you know, have the tag tag match, vice versa, whichever way you want to go there. Not having it consecutive things, I would say. Yeah. Probably not working out John is in favor. Now, this match should be a good match. Both have been a match here that Grissom has that technical style, Flip has the agile, the high quality. He can also, you know, really do well that face. So British Brown style. Very interesting for this match. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, though, the board as pure champion would be interesting. I don't really know, though, if Grissom would lose the title not long after winning it in the tournament. I mean, the tournament was like three weeks ago, I'll say. Yeah. I mean, this is his first defense since winning the, the title. So, I mean, do they say your first title defense is the most difficult? And with Gresham having two matches in the same night, we had just to see how it goes. Yeah, I think that if Gresham and Lethal don't lose the tag titles, 
then I would like to see, you know, maybe Flip Gordon. But at the same time, I think Grisham definitely proved himself at the Pierre tournament. And I think he could still hang on to the title for a little bit longer. And, again, not having to see Flip Gordon in Ring of Honor and who knows how long. It'd be fucking interesting to see what this match will entail. Like, who's going to go over? Yeah. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens, but I have no idea. For an opportunity, who is going to get a shot at the TV title? So it's Josh Woods, Tommy Dapper, and there's Miles G, and Dak Draper. So, yeah, that's a bit confusing. Yeah, really. But this is a word review. Anyways, yeah, this is interesting because I haven't seen most of them except for Josh Woods. So... This should be an interesting match, yeah, nonetheless. As opposed to who can go or who will go over, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, yeah. Josh Woods, LSG, Jack Draper, and those guys are very well first. Jack Draper, have you seen a lot of him? Think he was the uh, top prospect I was about. And you know, Alex G and I can't remember who was him. Coast to coast, anyways. They're a very big tech team. Alex G is, I guess, solo right now. And Josh Woods, no very big tech team. He's got some really good matches. He's very technical. He has that really good match-based style that really works for him. Yeah. As far as who's going to go over, it's like, okay, who of those guys and the four would benefit most from Opportunity. And you could probably say Josh Woods because he's the one that is the most, not really experienced, but like one you know the most about. I mean, with him having a lot of single matches, watching him. Yeah. All right. Well, it should be a good match now. Chasey match player, Maxi Squad versus Shane Taylor Promotions. That's Shane Taylor and SOS. Good thing lots of those guys. 
honestly. Yeah, me neither. So, it'll be a very good match, I'm sure. And again, it's one of those things where there's stock style. You have the Lucha style of the Mexi Squad mm -hmm. and the straight up in your face brawling style of Shane Taylor promotions. It'll be interesting to see if Shane Taylor promotions can get one over on the Mexi Squad. I'm sure they can, you know, be big, strong dudes that have this straight up in your face smash mouth style and then their high flying Lucha style of Maxi Squad. Yeah. Yeah, not knowing much about the Maxi Squad, that may that seemingly sways it more in the favor of St. Kelly Crawford. I mean, I'm not saying that the Maxi Squad isn't a good team, I just don't know much about it. Yeah, me neither. And they could have wrestled on Neymar, you know, AAA or CMLL or anywhere. I'm not quite sure, so I don't know either. But I do think that Shane Taylor Promotions is going to beat them down, as they always do. And yeah, I am going with Shane Taylor Promotions. Alright, so the last match is going to be the other half of the Briscoes, Jay Briscoe versus my least favorite wrestler, EC3. Now this Me neither. Well, I'm going to state the obvious and pick Jay Briscoe. I mean, look, I'll give it to you, C3. He's left Impact for the first time. He got his body right. He looks chiseled on his stone. He goes back to Impact, and now he's on Ring of Honor. It doesn't make any sense. However, yeah, he looks completely different than he has been in a while, so... They should be good for him, but, but I'm still going to say Jay Briscoe. Like you look at EC3 and he was in, and well he was in the WWE on NXT. That whole thing was the way it went. He went to Impact, he was on Impact for quite a while. You know, Impact World Champion, Grand Champion, undefeated for a year, I think it was, or two, whatever it was. Had a hell of a run in the Indian Cap. Decides to leave this pack, go back to Kevin Kennedy. He's on NXT. He's on NXT for a little bit. Then he gets hold of the main roster. Then he just got all the main roster. So he leaves Kevin Kennedy. Goes back to Impact. And basically all it is is he has to 
viewed this previous song. They have this bag. Luke beats me up and left the share bag of them. And then it's like, okay, one is done, bye bye, I'm going to the bar. Yeah. Now, whatever EC3 is going to do at Red Lavarder is yet to be seen. Who knows what his purpose in Red Lavarder is? Maybe just straight up have to fight, not worry about gimmicks and stupid ass shit. Who knows? But. Yeah, it's going to be a straight up fight for sure. And I mean, Jay Briscoe has already been world champion, so... Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think this is going to be a hell of a fight. You know, not just a straight-up wrestling match, but I think a hell of a fight. Yeah. So... Exactly. Yeah. So, anyway, so you picked Jay Briscoe, or...? Yeah. Yeah. So, this has been Ring of Honor Final Battle. I think this is our first final batter prediction show, but who knows what the future will bring for Wheels of Fury. I'm sure we'll do TLC, and well, I believe we'll do TLC. I'm going to stay positive, but after that, we will take a little hiatus like we did back in April. I don't think it'll be that long, though. We'll see, but... Anyways, for Killer Kyle, and this is me, Matt, and we'll see you next time. Chip!